Good Wednesday morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for this Wednesday, August 30th. Taking a look at our impacts for today, a significant one, we have a widespread area of thunderstorms uh, where you see the green or the red. The red will be uh, mostly dry with some wet mixed in, wetter, of course, as you head further south and east. Uh, so again, uh, we'll keep an eye on this lightning. Some of this stuff across parts of uh, far northern, northeastern Utah and southeast Idaho will probably be after dark tonight. Uh, but again, widespread area of lightning. Uh, also a concern along the Sierra front, northwest Nevada, will be strong winds uh, which could gust to over 30 miles per hour with low humidity and the uh, compounding factor is that this is occurring where areas did have lightning and uh, some heavy initial attack in the last 24 hours. Now for Thursday, the good news is the thunderstorm activity moistens up a little bit, starts heading further to the east. However, stronger winds uh, pushing up into parts of southern and central Idaho, uh, mostly across the uh, Snake River Plain, also uh, stronger gusts and uh, dry humidity. So those are our factors over the next two days. Over the past 24 hours, you can see lightning activity quite abundant, a big chunk here across the Sierra front, uh, quite a bit of lightning just about in all areas, uh, concentrated up here in Idaho as well, so have to wash that and some of the heavier fuels into western Wyoming where they've been drying out, and uh, been drying out across central and southern Nevada as well, so we'll have to see how that all plays out. So a wide variety of lightning over a big area in the past 24 hours. That has resulted in heavy initial attack. You can see new fire starts in the red circles, existing fires in the yellow. Open circles indicate large fire activity. Taking a look at observed precipitation over the uh, past seven days, quite dry. Those uh, light shades of blue are just indicating a few hundredths of an inch. The only uh, significant stuff was maybe in uh, northern Nevada, um, Arizona, but otherwise uh, quite dry. And even the past 30 days, other than some heavier rains as the monsoon ended across our southern areas, most of our central and northern areas remained quite dry. A look at current fuel conditions ERC-wise, you can see through here that a lot of our areas in Idaho have been to the 80th to 90th, even towards the 96th percentile. A significant drying across parts of western Wyoming and across the northern half of Utah as well, which has coincided with some new large fire activity. A lot of the greens further south have been uh, uh, turning yellow, so even down there, they're drying out. Uh, quite a bit. And we can see on the 100-hour fuel moisture that uh, a lot of areas uh, in uh, central and central to southern areas of Utah and Nevada have all dried out where we, we've uh, spent a couple of weeks and some monsoon has tapered off. So in a lot of these lighter fuel areas, uh, we could get new starts and new fires. There are no more really deep, moist areas anymore. Taking a look at our satellite imagery with upper level maps superimposed, you can see that uh, deep layer of moisture now across Nevada and expanding up into Idaho and western Utah. This will be our next round of showers and thunderstorms. Uh, part of it enhanced by this trough of low pressure, which is now forming off the California coast. This trough will also uh, increase the winds, unfortunately, across the Sierra Front, which uh, did experience lightning in the past 24 hours. Also will increase the winds up in Idaho as we go through the next 36 hours. Okay, taking a look at today's weather this afternoon on the left-hand side, upper level map shows a trough of pressure here over California, tapping that uh, moisture that's been over our area and basically expanding and growing it uh, where you see the green, isolated showers or thunderstorms probably actually more scattered to likely, especially in that darker green area across parts of uh, northwestern Nevada. I'll have to keep an eye on that and some of this stuff will push into uh, northern Utah and southeast Idaho uh, after dark nocturnally. And here's our wide expanse of lightning. Again, this will be this afternoon and maybe even extending into part of tonight across our eastern areas. So big concern as well as with northern Rockies and Pacific Northwest. Showers and thunderstorms further south will be over somewhat more moist, lighter fuels. Here's a look at our thunderstorm map for today on the left-hand side. And these streaks you see through here are especially uh, problematic. They're signatures of dry lightning. Could get a little wetter in some of the higher terrain in Idaho, especially uh, uh, eastern sections uh, towards the uh, Salmon Chalice and a bit further uh, to the east. The other concern here are winds. These dark greens and oranges you see here are winds of 25 to 35 miles per hour across the Sierra Front, and these winds will moderately extend across a good chunk of northern Nevada, north of I-80. The purple shades you see here are a little overdone. They're basically outflow boundaries from surrounding thunderstorms. So keep in mind, any thunderstorm has the possibility of producing gusty outflow winds over 40 miles per hour. 
Now for Thursday, that moisture starts shifting eastwards. Uh, we see dry air punching in as high pressure builds over the area. Uh, any thunderstorm threat we see here precipitation-wise will be on the wetter side, but winds will be a concern this time over southern Idaho, funneled by the Snake River Plain in areas that would have received lightning recently. Here's our lightning map. Uh, again, everything shifting eastwards. A lot of this would have probably occurred during the overnight hours, especially in uh, southeast Idaho. Uh, but getting a little wetter. You see those little pinks there over a half inch of precipitation in a few spots. You can see those uh, stronger winds in the olive and orange shades, 25 to 30 miles per hour up here in Idaho. So going down the road for Friday, change now. High pressure starts building and we start getting hotter and drier. See the fuels starting to dry out, turn into the brown across our western areas. Uh, Weather-wise, you can see the humidity level, single-digit humidity across uh, to low teens over many areas across the region. Winds diminishing, uh, a bit uh, moderate north wind, maybe 10 to 20 miles per hour. You see the green areas here across parts of Utah to keep an eye on that. Precipitation-wise on the large scale, fairly light across the area. So we continue in the long-range outlook, look at high pressure building strongly, just like we had last week with near record temperatures. Not only do we dry things out, but we see high Haines indices, uh, near record heat. So we've issued high risk for those areas here in northwestern Nevada and southwest uh, portions of Idaho. On Sunday, we expand that area of heat uh, to cover most of the northern half of the geographic areas. High pressure builds across the region seat through here, this vast expanse. Uh, as we go into Monday, similar story. We notice some moisture now starting being tapped up from the south. We can start seeing lightning across parts of uh, central and southwestern uh, Nevada, pushing northwards, maybe up in Idaho as well, and maybe more of that on Tuesday. So I'll be our concern not to watch that lightning after, again, several days of hot and dry weather where we have these high-risk areas in the orange. Precipitation over the next seven days, uh, most of it in the, in the first two days and our long-range outlook taking us from September um, 6th to the 12th. Uh, extremely warmer and drier than normal across much of our area. So again, that uh, no relief in sight. This concludes our briefing. Have a great day.